Sun Valley, people are talking about the streaming wars. Just yesterday, um, Warner Media, AT&T's Warner Media announced HBO Max is going to be its new service. With so many players in the space, who do you think is going to win the streaming wars? Well, I think it's uh, it's going to be a street fight. Um, and the good news for us is we think we've kind of sidestepped it. You have the greatest media companies all chasing the same ball, scripted series and scripted movies. So you have Netflix, Hulu, uh, Comcast and, and NBC are, are launching, um, Randall and Stanky with HBO Max. But they all kind of look the same. Apple is doing it. Scripted series, scripted movies. Great companies going to be fighting over that market share, price of content going up. Uh, it's great to watch. I think it's great for consumers. But it's incredibly crowded and it's incredibly expensive and none of them have enough and so we're our strategy is let's step to the side of that 50 to 60 percent of the content that people consume is not scripted series or scripted movies so for us it's home food discovery oprah crime chip and joanna Gaines. Uh, we own most of the golf in the world most of the cycling and so we see, okay, people love that kind of entertainment, but we have almost all that other great quality content, and we own it everywhere in the world. So we've quietly turned ourselves into a passion-driven IP company, and they're fighting over the same producers, over the same talent, while we get all the great talent in food and home. We did a big deal where we bought the BBC library, so we own almost all the science and natural history, planet Earth. And so we feel like we're in a good position and we're going to watch as they seed the market and fight to, to get scripted series and scripted movies for six, eight, ten, eighteen dollars. It's going to be a very difficult fight. Oh boy, do I got something for you today. Do I seriously got something for you today. So that was an interview that David Vazlav had uh, in July 2019. I think it was for, was it for Bloomberg? CNBC. It was for CNBC, okay. But there's a few very, very important details that he said in that. He said, first of all, 60% of our content is non-scripted shows and movies. 60%. So you have to understand, like, DC is a, is a footnote on his priority list right now, okay? He, he's pulling through a merger. He's pulling through a merger. But one thing I have to give this man a little bit of credit for, I believe he's one of these contingency types. He's like Batman. He has a backup for a backup for a backup. He is no fool. He's a businessman. And I think I see exactly what he's trying to do here. Because if you remember last year, he said that the DC Trinity were top priority post the merger IP. Okay. I want everyone to remember that. They were top priority. Now the Trinity, the DC Trinity is not Wonder Woman, Supergirl and Batgirl. It is Batman Superman and Wonder Woman. Okay? No. Batman is covered. We have um, the Batman releasing in March. So they're putting a lot into that. We also have uh, the Cape Crusader cartoon returning. We have a lot going on in with comics at the moment. Everyone knows the comics are completely oversaturated with Batman. We have a few more sprinkles of bits and pieces that are coming Batman related. But in relation to the movies, we are getting the Batman. We are getting Ben Affleck returning. But I think everyone's problem right now is that they're confused as to what's happening with Keaton. Everyone's freaking out saying the DCEU is dead, the DCU is dead. Trust me. It's not dead yet. There is a lot that can still play out. There is a lot up in the air. And we will not get any confirmation. Until this merger goes through. But I guarantee you people. Wait till like September. This merger is going to be true by the summer. Wait till September, October. We are going to get an absolute torrent. Of announcements. Especially when it comes to movies. And I want to walk you through something here. I want to give you previous leaks um, and the previous uh, plot leaks for the scripts that were submitted for The Flash. They were submitted in a certain timeline and I want to explain that timeline to you and have you make up your own mind on the facts that I present to you.
okay i'm not telling you what is i am merely giving you the tools to put together your own thoughts on the entire situation to calm everything down yes i am a snyder fan yes i made a drastic turn over the weekend i cannot explain why i can explain however that with a little bit of trust he will understand in time as to why i made that drastic change okay one hour i was supporting the snyder cut i was tweeting it out a couple of times an hour i was really active and everything and then all of a sudden i stopped there is a reason for that but i cannot go into detail as to why but i can say that after reading everything i have in front of me and putting the timeline together i can guarantee you by the end of this your mind your mind your mind will be slightly changed on the situation as well excuse me i need a drink there now here we go okay so as most of you know the script for uh suicide squad 2 i think it was being done by gavin o'connor um it was supposed to set up the team going on a mission excuse me it was supposed to set up the team going on a mission and it would have been more um kind of indiana jones types from the details i got it would have been more where they were like maybe going into the jungle or they were um going to find an artifact you know so it would have been like you know caves caverns jungle sand you know it would have been more kind of aquaman type on the scenery um and the theory behind all that was it was supposed to set up black adam so basically the uh, suicide squad would go out they'd complete their mission and then at the end of the mission they would like release black adam the only difference is is that they are giving they split that um because it was scrapped because they wanted it to be a comedy which led to james gunn's the suicide squad and peacemaker you can see that the the way james gunn really did it um i'm not gonna lie to anyone i love that movie um i really liked it and i thought it was you know a nice balance of fun yet action because i think you know with the dc movies being so gritty they need a bit of blood action i'm not gonna say gore that's not the word i'm looking for but i think like james gunn did a great job of distracting people from that there was like a lot of blood and bits and pieces but you get you get completely thrown off because in one scene the blood is turning into flowers and everything's going everywhere and you're not noticing it you're literally not noticing the blood because you're seeing it through harley quinn's eyes it it, 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 it i can't complain about it i know that like oh air cut air cut yeah great okay but i really respected james gunn's the suicide squad and i'm looking forward to peacemaker uh, even more now that i know the potential direction the dceu could be going in okay so um the split of suicide squad the rumor here is that hamada was trying to green light justice league 2 and 3 but david stopped in its tracks because of the murder which would make total sense now this is all coming from summer last year so about six months ago maybe a bit more um he was trying to get this sorted before the end of 2021 to save his job with the investors a lot of people have said that he was trying to scramble to do things like that so i believe that Thinking around the situation was Vaslev would bring Zach back into the fold and if the timing suits, most of this would have kicked off by the end of summer 21. However, things took a drastic turn due to the success of the Snyder Cut. Sorry, I think that was written backwards there. So basically, because of the success of the Snyder Cut, things were in motion and those things that were in motion were put on like mega hold. They were already on hold because of the merger, but with the success of the Snyder Cut, they were like, no, 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 done, you're on hold, you're on hold, end of discussion, stop now, um, so this is what I believe, I believe the execs have two separate roadmaps that connect everything together, no matter what happens with the merger, one being in the Hamada direction, everyone thinks it's is going to happen, and the other being in the Snyderverse direction, with Zack overseeing and possibly directing one or two movies, but nothing can be confirmed at this time however 
With all the recent developments with the flat, I wanted to go over the previous plot leads and start uh, from the start of last year and bring everyone up to speed, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you know that. Okay, so now I want to remind everyone that Andy Muschietti did like the Snyder Cut. He loved the Snyder Cut, apparently. Okay, so bear that in mind. So around just under two years ago, what? Sorry, three years ago. Just under three years ago. God, we're in 22. Around late March of 2019, Warner Brothers uh, met with Ezra Miller and Grant Morrison as they had submitted a very detailed draft of the Flash's screenplay as a counter to the Gold Scene Daily draft for a slightly darker and personal take on the speedster opposed to the whimsical, lighter pitch that was already presented. The Flash has already been established as a hero in Central City, active for a year and a half in the public eye. Uh, it's not really an origin story, but we're presented with flashbacks. The night his mother died, Barry getting struck by lightning, and um, up to him even coming up with various designs of the suit. There's even a callback to BVS of that surveillance footage seen in the convenience store seen from Barry's perspective. That would have been pretty cool. That would have been pretty cool because that is at least acknowledging BVS. So Barry and Iris are no longer together. They tried it, but it didn't work out. Okay. Uh, Barry's still learning about his limits of his abilities and the speed force and the concept of time travel. 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 He even takes it a step further to travel to Keystone, Pennsylvania to speak with a scientist who happens to be an expert on it. Uh, a lot of people believe that was Peter, or not Peter Garrick, but Jay Garrick. Yes, Professor Peter Garrick. Yeah who mysteriously knows Barry's name before he even introduces himself and basically breaks down how the speed can break uh, into time travel, but stresses the ramifications of it. So obviously, uh, Jay Garrick would have been a character. He would have warned him against it. And then when Barry got into trouble, apparently he was going to save him later on in the movie. Uh, so um, Barry's haunted by his mother's death and a red-eyed monster from that night. His trauma and paranoia is losing another loved one and the main reason he couldn't make it work with Iris. The film's plot revolves around Barry investigating a murder of a detective and Barry's mentor, John Alvins, who watched over him as a, a child. The investigation is botched and the CCPD catches the wrong guy, but Barry could already figure that it isn't the case, so he takes it a step further and investigates it as The Flash. And then, basically, Garrick would uh, warn him, uh, Barry, not to play with the fabric of space and time as it can create some kind of paradox. Ooh. Okay, let's stop it there a second. Right, so where were we? Um, ba, 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 ba. Paradox, I think I, I pulled it there. Okay, so that was the original. Um kind of outline of the first Flash story where he'd be working with Jay Garrick and uh, everything else. Now we're going to go on to the script that would have been from the start of last year. So the, the initial script with Grant Morrison and uh, Ezra was not taken on board. Things were up in the air, obviously, that's fair enough, but things have changed, so we're going to move on to the one that was probably submitted, um, and that they were, I'd say, m more than likely 60% running with until they saw the success of the Snyder Cut, and a few things had to be changed, okay? So, The Flash uh, and Batman investigate the murder of Flash's mother uh, to prove the innocence of Flash's father, Henry Allen. Batman informs Flash that he assembled, assembled the Justice League after receiving a message from the future from an older version of Flash. I have said this already. I theorised on Instagram that there was two Flashes in BVS already. And no, this can pay off. But I think they didn't even cop on to that until the second script part. So we'll talk about that in a while. Flash knows it's dangerous to alter the timeline, but is inspired by Batman's revelation to travel back in time to warn his parents of their fate so they can try and avoid it. Flash instead breaches the dimensional barrier and ends up in a parallel universe where the government is hunting metahumans. Um, Flash meets older Batman, which be Keaton, uh, who decides to help him return to his own universe before the dimensional breach that he accidentally created destroys both realities. So during the mission, Flash and Batman rescue Kara, 
uh, the daughter of uh, Christopher Reeve's Superman. So this was the initial, um, this was the initial storyline that she would have been in the i suppose you could call it the tim burton universe or the, the the christopher reeves universe they were merged together and she was the daughter of christopher reeves superman so she would have been called something kent don't ask me i can't get the name right now but we know she would have been i don't know cara kent or, or something kent anyway um so that superman would have died in that universe Okay, so uh, Kara has been captured by the government and she helps Flash and Batman defeat Mirror Master, who would have been one of the villains. Flash is too late and the realities begin to collapse. He races into the Speed Force, defeats Black Flash and meets another Flash, Grant Gustin, who encourages him to save both worlds. So obviously what we're getting from that is, is that they knew that they already had a Flash established and they wanted to merge these universes as best as possible. So instead of having a... J. Garrick mentor type, they decided to go with the already established Grant Gustin's Flash and have the TV shows and everything merge in, which would have been pretty cool because we've already seen uh, Grant and Ezra meet. So seeing that on the big screen would be a great thing for fans. It, it would be pretty cool. Like we saw it on the small screen, but on the big screen, it would be something else. So Flash resets the timeline by merging the two universes into a new reality where the Supergirl and the older Batman now exist alongside heroes such as Wonder Woman and Aquaman. Quite similar to what happened in After Crisis in, on the CW shows. So Batman decides to assemble and lead the heroes of the new world. Kara becomes Supergirl to honour her father. Okay, that was the middle league. So that would have been what was planned. Um the start of last year so around this time last year march even of last year but after the success of the snyder cut there was a few rewrites and there's a few other things happened which you can now tell as to why the flash has taken so long um and we're now going to go into the new plot leak which is the believe storyline and you'll see the differences and you'll see the changes they have made and hopefully, by even just hearing them, it'll explain to you, in your own head, you'll be able to put together, oh, okay, yeah, I get why they changed that. It only makes sense that they changed that for this reason and for that reason, and they all point in the Snyderverse direction. So hopefully you're going to get excited about this. Okay, so here's the new leak that fits the Snyderverse uh, that came out in October 2020. Very important. Okay, very important timing, and I'll talk about that at the end. So, number one, Supergirl is not the daughter of Christopher Reeve Superman. She is taking the Flashpoint Superman story. And she was sent to Earth instead of Kal-El. She isn't uh, Laura Lane. That's it. Laura Lane Kent should have been her name. She is Kara zor -El. Okay? So, if we're thinking the Flashpoint, um, I think what's going to happen there is that at the start of the movie, when Flash goes to Batman... In order for them to do what they need to do, Batman tells them that they need to free a certain prisoner. And you don't know who that prisoner is until she gets out. That's why I think that idea of the Flashpoint storyline is coming in there. Because if you remember Flashpoint in that universe, uh, Superman is like, he, he's like locked up. He's been locked up since he crashed in Metropolis because he didn't crash in Smallville. Um and he's been locked up and he has been kept under like, uh, red sunlights and stuff. So he's um he's really depowered. He's very thin, um he's uneducated completely. So when he comes out, he's a bit of a loose cannon. But you you know if you've seen the Flashpoint, you kind of picks up on that. I only watched it last night last night myself, so I was kind of looking at it going, oh yeah, I could see how, they would bring Sasha Cal into it being like um uh, maybe not an established hero but someone who was um an overpowered superhero and that's why she needs a mentor you know so we'll see okay so ben affleck's bruce wayne only shows up at the beginning of the film as he and barry are investigating Nora adam's death they talk and relate to each other as they both lost their mothers ben tells barry about the time uh sorry he tells barry about the time travel nightmare message that barry gave to him and they talk about time travel because Barry does it in the future and Bruce kind of tempts Barry to go back in time 
and prevent his mother's death, even though uh, he knows the repercussions of that. By telling him that um, if he has his powers, he would have so much uh, control. By telling him that if he has his powers, he would have so much self-control. Sorry. That tempts Barry to change the past. That makes um, the only time Affleck's Bruce Wayne appears in the film. I don't think that's the case at the moment. I think that he does tempt him to go back. Maybe there is a conversation about it. But I believe that at the start of the movie, Ben Affleck's Batman is going to die. And that will be the trauma that causes Barry to run. And I hope we get that iconic line from Ben of him lying on the floor after being you know killed by something or there's something happening there's a bomb about to go off or something bad to the city and he just says run Barry run and instead of turning back time like he did in Justice League he would literally just bolt out of there and be running and we get this emotional scene of him crying as he's just constantly running and running and next thing boom he opens the dimensional gateway and he, he gets transported into Keaton's universe. Um, I think that's how it's going to play out. But that's just my theory. So, um, Black Flash and Mirror Master are the villains of the film. And the trickster has a comedic cameo. Mirror Master is played by Saoirse Monica Jackson, which is a bit of a surprise. We all thought she might have been um, on Team Flash, not a villain. Black Flash will be CGI, which everyone has said. Everyone has said that it'll be so much easier. A lot of people have said as well that he, Ezra, yeah, Ezra will probably voice Black Flash. It will just be a variation of himself, and he will look extremely scary. Rudy Mancuso, Man Mancuso, sorry if I'm messing that up, will actually be the trickster according to this. So Black Flash is after the Flash for endangering the multiverse. Makes sense. Perfect sense. Mirror Master's story has changed in this film. She is the daughter of the OG Mirror Master, who was one of Keaton's old enemies. I believe that the story there is that uh, metahumans are illegal in this universe. So, yeah, sorry. Let me just read on and it'll explain it. In Keaton's timeline, metahumans are illegal. So, when the Argus, uh, so when Argus hears about the Flash, they send Mirror Master's daughter uh, to capture him. When Barry makes the hard decision to let his mother die in order to save the multiverse, we see him running in the Speed Force creating a new timeline as it shows little snippets of some DC films to show what's canon in the new timeline. These are the films we see. Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 84, Batman 1989 and Batman Returns. Then we have Man of Steel, Aquaman, Shazam, Birds of Prey, The Suicide Squad, and we hopefully will have something from Black Adam in there as well. The film does end with Henry Allen getting freed from prison in the new timeline with the help of Iris West and Keaton's Bruce Wayne. Supergirl also shows up for support, apparently. Okay, so the uh, very interesting synopsis that was put on IMDb about this. So Barry Allen travels back in time to stop a catastrophic event from happening. His mother dying. But after doing this, uh, the whole world changes and now the reverse Flash is trying to kill Barry. So, I can't remember the name of the actor, the guy that replaced, is it Billy, Billy, yeah, Billy Crudup? The guy that replaced him, apparently there's a rumour that he is going to be the reverse Flash as well. I, I don't know what the story is there, if he's just wearing... Henry Allen's face or if there's something I don't know but that'll be a weird one but it would be interesting to see what happens if it is um, Barry tries to go back in time but with the reverse flash messing everything up Barry goes through the multiverse and teams up with an old Batman and a crazy Superman Superman a crazy Superman interesting interesting choice of words there i presume they meant supergirl crazy supergirl would make a whole lot more sense because her being the flashpoint type where she's um no, i'm not gonna say feral that's not the word just undereducated and uh you know she she maybe has all this kryptonian knowledge up to maybe the age of like 15 but when it comes to um 
the human world and dealing with humans and the limitations of her power on the planet she's not even aware of that because she did, didn't even know she had powers until she was freed from this prison you know so when she comes out she could be like whoa like you know like when we got um superman being released and we saw him you know just he used his laser vision and took out all the soldiers on the beach and then tried to stop it so he put his hands over his eyes and he caused everyone to have to jump out of the way and everything you know that those type of scenes where she's blowing up buildings and she didn't even mean to do it now <clears throat> let's go with the updates part of this section updates very very important updates so let's go right back to the start of last year we got the first script where we had Ben and Ezra, we had everything else, blah, blah, blah. Um, we had uh, the Christopher Reeve, Sasha Cal storyline. And then we get this new plot in October 2020. Okay, so timeline. We have the first story set up. This would have been before the summer. Then during the summer, after the success of the Snyder Cut and seeing what they able to make, what they made in subscriptions and everything else, they kept that completely close to the chest. There was things put on hold. I believe that Hamada was trying to rush through a Justice League two, if not a Justice League two and three. Excuse me. The end of the summer, a decision was made to stop everything keep that idea on ice and they had a conversation with Zach now I think the conversation with Zach was for two things because himself and good old Clay <laughs> good old Clay oh I love you Clay they keep teasing 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 I want to point out this new Flash Snyderverse type script was released in October on Thanksgiving we were given an absolute gorgeous present from Zach of the turkey with the final crisis in the background and two two notebooks on top of it we got teases about the Batmobile coming up to Christmas um there hasn't been any like direct teases so far of anything else from zach but the batmobile and clay posting the pictures of him taking the picture of the batmobile with ben and everything very very interesting next bit of news which was last week joe maglionelli followed james gunn hmm <laughs> okay <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Take a second, take a second. Y'all with me? Okay, so we're up to Christmas now. We're up to Christmas. No. New Year's. We get absolutely terrible news that apparently Flash is going to retcon everything and soft reboot the DCEU. We are getting Sasha Cal replacing Henry Cavill as the main soups. And we're getting uh, Leslie Grace replacing Ben Affleck as the main bat. Uh, even though she will be the, um, I suppose, she'll be the main one. But Keaton will still have an overviewing role of that entire scenario. So it'll be like he's bringing the two girls under his wing. Literally. Um, they're going to be both mentored by him because they need to be. No. No. This means that Ben is stepping back. It is very aware that Ben is stepping back. We all kind of know this. What we don't really know is about that um, apparent pitch and meeting over a Baflex series with HBO Max. Now, apparently this has been confirmed that that meeting did happen, that that our phone conversation or idea was pitched to Ben and he refused it. And a lot of people don't exactly know the details of why. But it is believed that he refused it because Zach wasn't directly involved. Makes sense. I get it. He didn't want to deal with anyone else. Maybe. Okay. Fair enough. So I believe right now. Ben is going. I'm out. Still. 
I'm doing my bits and pieces for you and I'm giving you the scenes you need to end it with me if everything doesn't work out but he's keeping that door open with them there's been too much talk about him from the industry there's been too much talk about Cavill from the industry see that's the thing when it's like fans and you know Twitter accounts even spoilers going on about it it's like no there's nothing with that but we've been getting all these interviews we've been getting all this information we've been getting all this back and forth and this blah 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 it's only a media market. It's just people manipulating things for money just to test out, like, you know, um, media awareness and just to test out, you know, what the consumer wants. It's just all data. It's all data. It's all they're doing. They're just get, getting data just to see what's good for them. And these celebrities have to just put up with it in the meantime. You saw what happened with No Way Home. A lot of that was kept close to the chest. You want us to think DC isn't going to be doing that? It's got a merger to protect. Not just, you know, secrets from fans. It's also got a merger protect and it's serious IPs to look after. So, um, I don't, don't think we're getting anything announced until September, as I said. But I can tell you we're going to get a lot announced. And it's hopefully going to be in the direction of we get the Flash movie. It reboots it. It doesn't decanonize the trilogy. It keeps them there. It just creates this multiverse. Or as Ezra Miller actually Ezra Miller Ezra Miller actually called it himself a megaverse, which is very interesting. So back to New Year's and us getting all that bad information. On New Year's Eve, as you know, there was a massive push for the Snyder Cut. Everyone was tweeting, uh, restore the Snyderverse. You know, and keep tweeting that. Keep that going. I'm not saying I'm not a fan of that anymore. I'm just saying that after I put everything together and after I was told one or two things, then I'm not... Let me put it this way. We're all fighting each other. You can see people having arguments on Twitter over this and that. If this goes through, it'll cater for all fans. So keep fighting for what you're fighting for because you're more than likely going to get it everything all together just keep fighting for what you're fighting for to make sure that these investors and all these execs know this is what fans truly want they can't they can't avoid everything on the internet forever they literally can't it'll ruin ips for them it'll ruin everything but please bear in mind 60 percent of all their content has got absolutely nothing to do with scripted material okay no as we were tweeting restore the snyder us uh, we got all this information about other characters coming into the Flash movie. So, first, uh, Big Screen Leaks uh, informed us that Gal Gadot shot her scenes for the Flash in July and August. Which was, um, which was pretty interesting. We got a very hilarious tweet from David F. Sandberg. Um, Shazam is joining the Justice League? Question mark, 2022? Starting out with some great news. Um, uh, with a great meme. Everything's coming up. Batson to the Millhouse. I actually thought that was funny. Um, we then got something else. So we got from the Flash film news. An update. If you think the Gal Gadot news is wonderful. This will make a splash once it's been confirmed. And we have a shot of Ben Affleck. The Flash. Aquaman and then it switches to Keaton's Batman so yes we probably will see something of Aquaman and Wonder Woman which suits because it literally says the films that we will see in this new canon timeline that Barry creates will be Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 84 Batman, Batman Returns Man of Steel, Aquaman, Shazam Birds of Prey, The Suicide Squad okay good however a day ago the Flash film news incoming with a thunderbolt to the gif of Ezra Miller in Zack Snyder's Justice League who's going to say it I'm not going to say it as he's looking at the mother box big big hints that we might have Superman if we do I believe it doesn't need to be anything big it doesn't even need to be 
um, Henry Cavill. It could be another type of cameo type thing, or it could be a scene of him coming in at the end, um, and just maybe I don't know. Could even be an acknowledgement of the kryptonite bullet, where they just say, "Oh yeah, he got out of the ICU." Something funny like that would be good actually, but I do believe there would be some sort of nod to Henry Cavill Superman in this. Um, maybe he's on TV news report or something i don't know i don't know but they're gonna kind of have to in this one they can't bring in supergirl and not have the questions you know especially even from ezra's flash like he's gonna be like i know someone like you i know someone with the same powers as you you must be like from the same planet you must be related blah 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 and then you might get the whole story i was sent here after someone and she could have been thrown through a dimension maybe and came out in that universe instead of coming out in the Snyderverse universe if that makes sense um, I hope you have a better understanding of what I'm getting at and why I had to reread these plot leaks and put it all together myself and just have a few things kind of pointed out I keep following Vero Keep following Clay and Zach. Um, keep close eyes on the merger. The more news we have from that, the better. And that's the where the big stuff is going to come in now in the future. Um, we will see a new Justice League. I do believe that. But I believe a lot of doors are being left open for the full tree trinity to come back in total at some point. Uh, or in some way, shape or form. Um, if not a final crisis lead up where Ben Affleck's dead and we get a side Batfleck TV show on HBO Max and then they lead up to final crisis and they do that whole uh, storyline of Batman being killed by the Omega Beams and he's actually been sent through history remember that I think it was New 52 was that the new 52? It doesn't matter right now, but you, you probably know the storyline. And um, Ben could, you know, just be, you know, he could have died in the Flash movie, but he could have been sent into this universe and he doesn't know who he is, but he keeps having these stories of being bat, uh, where um, it could play out like the nightmare timeline. It could be very interesting to throw something in there as well. Uh, but you, we literally don't know what's coming. We don't and we won't know for a while. Uh, saying the DCEU is dead. No, I don't. Uh, I can't support that right now. Not after what I've put together. Not after what has been pointed out to me. So I'm going to keep my mouth shut on everything else. Because it's too juicy. It's way too juicy. I'm going to leave you with that. And um, keep watching the skies on this one.